What's cooking, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Nights at the Kitchen Table. I'm Cal. And I'm Seth. And we're bringing you another episode of Seven and a Half Budget Cards for Commander. Yep, this is our signature series, Seven and a Half Cards. That's what we do. We do Budget Commander, and we're bringing you seven cards that are around a dollar or so, and then a half card, which is... Yeah, it's an it. actual card, I promise. Honorable but mention. Costs a little bit more. It's usually between two and five dollars, but it's still worth mentioning. Cool. Well, with that, let's dive into it. Card okay. number one. We've got Soul Exchange. It is a two mana sorcery. It's just two black. It reads as an additional cost to cast a spell, exile a creature you control. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a plus two plus two counter on that creature. That's unique. If the exiled yeah. creature was a thrall. Yep. So I actually run this deck in my Aristocrats deck. Run this card like, in your deck? What did I say? <laughs> you run this deck. This is an I entire this, deck unto itself. <laughs> yeah, I run this card <laughs> in my Aristocrats deck, my uh, Tevesh Zot deck, because uh, he creates thralls. And so True. I have an endless supply of thrall tokens to just throw at this soul exchange. Um, I love it because, you know, you just choose the best card in your graveyard which a black deck is usually full of them. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice a Thrall, which is a useless little creature, and you get your best creature with a plus two, plus two counter Yeah, on it. proliferate that counter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually my favorite reanimation spell. Outside of like the actual like $10 reanimate, which makes right, you lose yeah. life. We're talking the... budget. This right. is budget commander. Yep, so I mean, this is a good replacement for it. And I really think it outclasses a lot of the other ones. That's just my opinion. Um, it does. It's only two mana. It is two black, so you have to have two pips. But yeah, which is a little, it's a little restrictive, I guess. But but not that bad. It, uh, you have to notice it does exile the creature that you that you're removing to reanimate. So it doesn't trigger like sacrifice or death triggers, right. unfortunately, because you are exiling it. Um, but yeah, it's just and you can't just like go back and forth between graveyard and battlefield. Right. right. Yeah. So so you can't be like soul exchanging creatures you want to be getting back yep. so be, be mindful of that but yeah it's just a fantastic efficient reanimation spell it's I love it it's fantastic did we mention how much it costs? 80 cents 80 cents less, less than, than a buck. buck and if you get it damaged or moderately played 50 Even cents less than that yeah cool. alright number two this is Gaia's Balance this is a green mana sorcery a green sorcery it costs three and a green it says as an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice five lands sacrifice Search your library for a land card of each basic land type. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle. For 24 cents. Yeah. Less than a quarter. Stupid cheap. Less than a quarter. The perfect color fixing card. I love this so much in five color commander decks. Yeah. Oh, it's literally... It is beautiful. Because, <laughs> I mean, turn... If you've got any ramp, you can cast it on, like, turn three or four, right? Mm -hmm. Once you've got some lands out. Yeah, you do need to have... Like, that's the biggest stipulation. You have, you have to have lands. five lands on the battlefield right. to play this. So if this you've been a, ramping, you'll have five by turn three or four. Mm -hmm. If you're not ramping, turn five, which is still okay. Yeah. And it, it's just basically a fail-safe. Turn five, if you're still missing colors mm -hmm. in your deck... Guys, balance will get that for you. The best part is, it's basically a free spell because, because yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They, yeah. yeah, so I, I didn't mean to say your thunder. No, go ahead. But they, the lands you're getting don't enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah, so you tap yeah. the lands, you cast this for four, right? You sacrifice mm -hmm. five, and you get five lands out untapped, and you can just recast some five mana spell. Yeah, just beware if this spell gets countered. Yeah, that sucks. Don't be friends with that person anymore. Yeah, no, because the <laughs> sacrificing the land is part of the cost. Yep, so if this spell gets countered, you are out, guys, balance, and five lands. Yeah, that would be a not good situation, but that's not going to happen. It's a good often. sign to go to bed at that point. Yeah, if you're playing, usually I feel like a game is friendly enough at this early in the game that nobody's going to counter that unless you're playing pretty competitive. Mm -hmm. And we're in budget. So. Yeah. Um, other thing to notice, this can also get non-basic lands. It doesn't have to be basic lands. Any That's land true. that has the basic land type, if you, I mean, Triomes and Shocks are a little out of our budget range, right? But I mean, if you do have those, this can get them as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you can get the uh, the Snow Duels. The Snow Duels, the, yeah. And they just Absolutely. reprinted a cycle of uh, tap dual lands that are non-snows yep. that do have mana uh, that are card types as budget. well. Yeah, the super budget. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, if you, it has two land types, it's not going to be taking up one of Guy's Balance's land types. Right, because you so. get five lands, mm -hmm. and you just you grab a plains, regardless if it's a plain swamp. Yep, and you it's, need a swamp forest. Yep. So it, it, it just really, really helps your fixing. Additionally, uh, landfall decks would love this. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because yeah, you're getting true. five, five triggers. triggers. Five landfall triggers, yep. Um, so I mean, if you... If, so it's even great late game. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, if you're yeah. in landfall. Uh, also, additionally, you can fail to find. You don't have to get five different types. I always of forget about that rule. Yeah. So Such if you're a playing weird like that doesn't happen. Like, for, for landfall again, four color omnath, something like that. You don't have to go get your swamp. Yeah. So you can just get the four back. Right. Because you, if you're playing a four color, you can fail to find the fifth. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of fizzles. There's no consequence to it, so it's fine. Yeah, so you do lose out of land, but right. you're playing this for the land drops. So you're, the value you're getting from having four lands and the battlefield simultaneously more than makes up for that. Perfect. I love so, it. It's a, such a good card. Yeah, it's my five-color staple. We, I've played it a half a dozen, dozen times now, and I've never once been unsatisfied. Five it's, stars. It's less okay. than a quarter, 24 cents. Yeah. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I promise you. So, next up, we got Gamaz Gomazoa. Say that five times fast. Gomazoa, 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 Gomazoa. Sure. <laughs> it's two and a blue. It's a creature. Jellyfish. I love jellyfish in magic. Jellyfish tribal. Try it out. I know. So it has defender and flying, and it has tap, put Gomazoa and each creature it's blocking on the top of their owner's libraries. Then those players shuffle their libraries. So not only does it get rid of whatever threat is coming at your face, but it also just shuffles their library. So not only is it just gone, kind of put on the top of its library, it doesn't just put it in its graveyard where it can be reanimated. It doesn't mm. bounce it back to its hand where it can be sh cast again. It shuffles it in. That's that card is back. not yes. Yeah, that card is gone. <laughs> Basically, exile that point. Although commanders will go back to the command zone, right? Obviously, but but this is like the best deterrent out there. I oh swear. yeah. And honestly, the the act the activation itself isn't as good as the threat of activation. Like you slap this down, no one is going to attack you. No, nope. because no one wants to risk losing their best card. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it's it, honestly I'd rather play this than probably like a propaganda or something. Right, because in propaganda you can get around it. Mm. There's ways to skirt that. You just pay two mana. Congrats, now you have a ten ten coming at your face. Yeah. This they throw a ten ten at your face. <laughs> that ten ten's going, going away. <laughs> it's going away forever. <laughs> yeah, so way more. It plays. It punches way above its three CMC and eleven cent price tag that it's got. Eleven Sorry. cents. Mana value. Not it's CMC. a dime. Yeah, diamond a penny. Don't don't discount that. Sorry. Yeah. So we love this in blue commander decks that aren't focused on combat. Very much. Right. Yeah. So. so if you don't have a lot of aggressive creatures, which most mono blue decks don't, mm -hmm. or if it's a or like red, is it? you know, yeah. spell slinger. So as you're getting your board state ready for your for popping off with your combos or whatever, this is a great way to just kind of like keep the enemy at bay while mm -hmm. you're getting ready. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Token decks kind of get around this a little bit, but a little uh, bit, but yeah. If you're if you're facing against tokens, you're probably dead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that takes us to our one, two, three, fourth one. That is Dragon Breath. It is a one and a red, so two mana enchantment aura. It reads enchant creature, obviously. An enchant creature has haste. It then gives you Dragon Breathing by paying one red. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus zero to end a turn. But the best part is here, when a creature with mana value six or greater enters the battlefield, you may return Dragon Breath from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature for 18 cents. I love it. It's great. So it's basically a Dragon Mantle, but it gives haste. Haste. And... That's if the creature it's attached to dies, you can always get it back by casting another big creature. Yeah. Every single one of your big creatures have haste. I love, especially in like mono red decks, because like mm -hmm. you want to be going fast. I look like I look at this, I look at this card and immediately think Atali. So that Atali is just <laughs> so <laughs> stupid busted. I mean, yeah, you play and you have to wait yeah. an entire turn cycle. And That's if anyone's playing against Atali, like it doesn't dinosaurs. survive. That's yeah. the problem, is they enter. And you have this giant threat, and you're so excited. You pay six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana for and them. And it's gone. And then by the time it's your turn again, <laughs> someone's removed it. <laughs> but when they do remove it, because ine inevitably your big threats are going to get answered. Right. That's just reality. Board wiped, single target removal, whatever. But haste, you at least get one use. Exactly. And Dragon Breath goes to the graveyard, but it comes back, kind of like Rancor does. Yep. Just so your next way. big thing, you get another yep. one use out of it. Yep. And then if you have extra mana to throw it, to lay around, pump some red into it, and just pump its power. So, yeah, I, That's true. I mean, if you're playing a mono red burn deck or something, you've got mana for days anyways. Yeah. So, yeah, you just pump that full of red mana, throw it at somebody's face, and just literally dragon breath. Yeah. If you're playing big creatures, Xenagos, Zalortha, it's a fantastic one as well. Atali, like I mentioned. We're yeah. definitely going to pull up a picture of this card right now because I love the art of this. It's just a pig breathing <laughs> fire. And if that doesn't need to be in every red deck, I don't know what does. This is me in the morning. That's my morning breath. <laughs> 
All right, that takes us to our next one here. So that takes us away. Rushed Rebirth. This is a fun one. So it's a black green instant. It, that's what it costs. It costs black and a green. Choose target creature. When that creature dies this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser mana value and put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Four. Uh, I gotta look that up. 24 cents. 24 cents. So, yeah, less than a quarter. So it's like a reverse. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot this thing. card's name again. It's off the top of my head, too. It's gone. The, the modern deck. We'll put a picture of it up on the screen. I can't think of we'll it right now. Post. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it is a great way to, if either you're sacrificing a creature or one of your creatures is getting removed, to get extra value off of that. Yep. No, that's awesome. Cause that At means- instant speed. You're playing if you're doing combat, if you're doing sacrifice stuff, whatever you're doing. If a creature's going to die, before it dies, you simply play this card, and then you get to tutor your library for anything. The with stipulation the is it has to cost less. Yeah, but I like what this does for like creature-based removal, like like reclamation stages. It turns those in instant speed. Yeah. So like your Rex Sage is three mana, right? right? Yeah. You just you sacrifice a four mana creature, right? And then instant speed, you can get your Reclamation Sage onto the battlefield and remove your en- enchantment or artifact that's giving you problems. Yeah, and instant speed. So it's a good way to take that sorcery speed removal and turn it instant speed. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Rush Rebirth, check it out. Good. Any Golgar. Oh, go ahead. 24 cents. <laughs> yep. Any Golgar, Sultai, Abzan, Sacrifice decks, take a look at this. Yep. Okay, next up. Next one. I love this one so much. The art itself is just beautiful. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it is weird. Burnt offering for one black mana. You have an, an instant or uh, interrupt, as the uh, the magic boomers used to say. It says, as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Add X mana in any combination of black and or red, where X is a sacrificed creature's mana value. Note, it does not have black or red mana pips in the text box. So I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, this goes in mono black decks. Right, you don't have to have red in, this, in your color identity to play this in Commander. I think you're right. have to look it up, but I think you're correct. Yeah, so for our 41 cents. So it's basically like a dark ritual, but just better in every way. Yeah, I... Because mono blacks usually care about creatures dying. Mm-hmm. Which sort of trigger all your sacrifice or death exactly. triggers. Exactly, yep. So your this board. is going to tra- trigger all of death triggers. And then you get X mana in whatever combination. So if you do have red in your deck, cool, you get awesome. You get red mana. You get In any combination, you get one red and you have four black or vice versa. But if you're playing mono you black, need. you just get a bunch of black mana, which you can then use to cast some big scary. Mm-hmm. It's a great way just to really power out a high CMZ commander. Yep. Or kind of like in a weird or way, just a game finisher. Mana. Yeah, your yeah. commander, game finisher, whatever combo you got. Yeah. It's a great way to, you know, you can power out some Eldrazi on this on turn five. Yeah. You have a five CMC creature, sacrifice it, and go to town. Get some mana. Disgusting. So, yeah, we love this. It's uh, fantastic in black decks. I love sacrifice triggers, so, like, almost all of them. <laughs> and any deck you're running that has a high CMC commander. So, yep. take a look at Burn Offering and check a look. take a look at that art. It's only well, 41 cents, so... Super budget friendly. Yeah. Give it a whirl. All right, next card we have Fog Bank. I love this card. I, I hate run this card. It's I run awful. this in a couple of my decks. So sick of seeing it. Um, it's very, very similar to Gomazoa. Um, so it's a two mana creature. It's a wall. It has Defender Flying. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to or by Fog Bank. So, very similar to Gomazoa, it's a perfect defender where, you know, somebody throws anything at your face and the damage just kind of fizzles. It just blanks the best attacker. Right. It just, nothing happens. It's fresh. You run this in your Bruvac <laughs> deck, right? I do. And you, it shows up every single game. I don't understand why. <laughs> it does. It shows up a lot. Oh. Yeah, no, I run this in my Bruvac deck because Bruvac cares about mill. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of creatures that really feed into that synergy, so it's a very mm-hmm. instant and sorcery-heavy deck. So he's very, very vulnerable to attacking decks, which... That's very what I like vulnerable. Play. So I throw this in there, and anytime anybody throws anything big and heavy at my face, I just block it with a fog bank. Nothing happens. And it stays around. And it's almost more frustrating than, you know, if I were to block and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and you can't even give like your attacking creature trample or something because it just doesn't do any damage. Oh, that's yeah. We didn't mention that it blocks 
trample. Mm. No matter how big the trample and is, it's it could be it so. could be a fifty fifty trample, and it just fizzles. It goes away. As a Timmy, you can do everything right, and your day will just be <laughs> ruined a by a fog bank. Yep. Also, check out the art with like the Velociraptors in it. Is that what those things are? Yeah, it's like I, Velociraptors. It's so cool. I love it for some reason. <laughs> so. All right, that concludes our seven budget cards. On to our bonus round half card, which is a little more expensive. Point five. It is a uh, Forbidden Orchard. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is a very popular card. It shows up in a lot of decks, but we want to do a quick public service announcement because price drop. It is a lot less than it used to be. Yeah. Reprints, praise Asmore. This card used to be at one point it was like twenty two, twenty. Like a bucks. year ago, a year ago yeah. it was about twenty bucks and more than twenty bucks, and six months ago it was still fifteen. Yep. And now it is down to four and a half dollars. That Double Masters reprint. So for anybody doing the Lord's work. doesn't know, Forbidden Orchard is a land that says tap, add one mana of any color. It does have a stipulation where anytime you tap it for mana, one of your opponents gets a 1 1 spirit. So you just, for one. A non flying spirit. Non flying, yeah, and the, that is important. Yeah, a lot of spirits yeah. have flying, this one does not. Yep. So. Um, actually, that that can be a drawback at times, but again, you can curry usually not political favor. Yeah, I love that. Be like, hey, you want to be friends? Have a have a be like, spirit. hey, if I give you a spirit, will you not attack me? Yeah, you did the sacrifice deck. Who needs bodies to sacrifice? You become really usually good friends. it'll work until mm-hmm. you become the threat, and then not anymore. But. Yeah. <laughs> so do be do be a little judicious when you do tap this. Uh, but commanders that want opponents to have creatures, I run this in my Torolf deck, my my mono red burn spell deck. Yeah, because I, even though I'm, I'm mono red, so they add one man of any color doesn't really help me a lot. It gives opponents creatures, which then I need, so my damage based board wipes and spells do more damage. Right. So cards like Massacre Girl mm-hmm. that um, can help really get that minus one trigger rolling. It's not budget, but uh, the uh, Meat Hook Massacre, same thing. Yeah. That's not a budget card, though. Yeah. So don't buy that card. It's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so a yeah, serious price drop. This yeah. card is less than a fourth of what it used to cost. So if you're in the market for an untapped land that taps a man of any color, uh, just basically a backup for your command tower. Don't pick it up because it's bound to climb back up eventually. Yeah, it's, it's wait six go months. Back up, so it's, you might as well go pick yeah. it up, throw it in your decks, and if you hate it, resell it in a year or two and get more than your money back. Look at that free value, not financial advice, but anyway. Well, that brings us to a conclusion of our seven and a half cards. Hopefully, found something helpful. If uh, you're on the fence with some of these, just try them. Give it a whirl. Like you're not investing any money in these. No. Yeah. Just don't buy your gumball for the week. <laughs> I don't know. Well. That's it. That's our video. Thank you so much for watching. Like don't and subscribe. To yeah, don't forget to. T- <laughs> yeah. Might cut that. Hey, Zazmore. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs>